Welcome to the Abacus CE demo. Abacus CE stands for Complete Abacus Environment and provides a complete solution for Abacus finite element modeling for simulations to be solved using Abacus Standard, Explicit, and Abacus CFD. Abacus CA is modular and well organized and is easy to learn and use. It provides powerful and flexible meshing capabilities for complex geometries and has market leading support for Abacus functionalities. Abacus CE also has extensive tools for visualizing your Abacus results. Let's now briefly look at the components of Abacus CE main window. The model tree provides you with a graphical overview of your model and a convenient way of moving between modules and managing simulation objects. The toolbar provides a quick access to items that are also available in the menus. Abacus CA prints useful status information and warning messages in the message area. The module drop-down menu in the context bar provides a quick access to the different modules of Abacus CA that are the different functional units of Abacus CA like paths, assembly, loads, etc. Now let us look at an Abacus CA demo where I'll show you how to create a hinge assembly composed of a hinge held together by a pin. I will then apply section properties, load and boundary conditions to the model, mesh the model, configure the analysis and run the analysis job. At the end of the demo, I'll show you how to view your analysis results using Abacus CAE. I'll begin by creating my first hinge part. Abacus CA models are composed of features and the parts are created by combining features. In this case, my hinge part consists of a cube, a flange and a small lubrication hole. I'll begin by selecting the create part icon from the toolbar and select the 3D deformable solid using the extrusion as my part attributes. The tool takes me to a sketch module where I'll sketch a cube profile and give extrusion parameters to create a cube. I'm now going to add a flange to the base feature which is my cube. I will select the plane on which I want to reference my flange and proceed to sketch my flange profile. I can adjust my sketcher options like grid spacing etc if I need to assist me while sketching my flange. I can dimension my sketch and constrain my sketch to help me position my flange hole to be concentric to the flange. Once I'm done with sketching, I'll flip my extrusion direction and give a depth to generate my flange. I can always go back to my model tree and make changes to the feature definition. And in this case, I will decide to keep the internal boundaries of my feature. I will now create the hole on my flange. To place the hole in the desired location, I would have to create an appropriate datum plane on which I will create the profile and generate my duplication hole by extruding the cut. Once the datum plane is created, I can create the sketch profile on the datum plane and dimension my sketch and then proceed to perform an extrusion cut to generate my duplication hole. I will select up to face as my type and select the face till which I want the extrusion to be performed. I have now created my flange part and I will now proceed to assign section properties on my part. The process of assigning section properties to a part is divided into three tasks. Creating a material, creating a section that includes the reference to the material and assigning the section to the part or to a region of the part. I will create a simple material with elasticity. Note that Abacus CE supports many nonlinear material models. Once the material is created, I can define section properties referencing the material and then assign it to my part. In this case, I am defining my hinge part as a solid homogeneous section with steel material. Note that I can define multiple sections or materials to different regions of the same part. Now I'll create the remaining parts in my assembly. Since my assembly consists of two flanges, I can just copy the existing flange and rename it. Since my other flange does not have a lubrication hole, 
I will simply delete those features from my part. Now I will proceed to create the pin which is the final part in my assembly. I will choose 3D analytical rigid with revolved shell as my part attribute since I want to model the pin as the rigid part by revolving a line around an axis. I will also define a reference point on the part to be able to apply loads and boundary conditions. Once all my parts are created, I can go into the assembly module and create instances of the parts and then assemble them together. Note that I can have multiple instances of the same part. Using the constraints, I can position my part related to one another. Once I have finished constraining my first two parts, I will bring my third part, the pin, and position the part related to my assembly using concentric constraint and offset constraint much the same way as I did with the previous parts. Once my assembly is created and before I apply loads or boundary conditions to my model or define contact within the model, I have to define the steps for the analysis. Step provides a convenient way to capture changes in the loading or boundary conditions in my model and also define the analysis procedure and related output requests. I will create two static steps for this analysis. In the first analysis step, I will allow contact to be established and I will adjust the initial increment to a smaller value and accept other defaults. And in my second step, I will modify the two boundary conditions applied to my model and apply a pressure load at one of the hinges. When I create a step, Abacus CA selects a default set of output variables corresponding to the analysis procedure. I can also go and add additional output requests if I need. In this case, I will add contact outputs at specific increments. I will also create a set that will contain a single node. I will use this set later to apply my boundary conditions. Now that my analysis has been defined, I will go ahead and define contact between regions of the model. I can either do it manually or let Abacus CA automatically find the contact regions for me. But before defining contact itself, I will define contact interaction properties that define the mechanical relationship between surfaces that are in contact. In this case, I will simply create a frictionless property. I will now use the find contact pairs automatic tool to list all the contact regions in my model. Using the tool, I can highlight all the contact pairs and delete them if I think they are redundant. I will then rename the contact pair appropriately and change the discretization method to node to surface from surface to surface. Note that identifying and defining contact using the find contact pairs automatic tool is very simple and easy. Now I am ready to apply load and boundary conditions to my model. I will first create a boundary condition that constrains all the degrees of freedom at the end of the hinge piece that has the lubrication hole. I will also create a boundary condition that constrains all the degrees of freedom of the pin while the contact is established during the first step. I will then modify this boundary condition in the second analysis step so that the degrees of freedom 1 and 5 are unconstrained. I will also constrain all the degrees of freedom on the hinge with no hole using a set that was previously created. I will modify the boundary condition in the second analysis step so that the degrees of freedom in one direction is unconstrained. Now that I have defined all the boundary condition, I will apply a pressure load to the end of the solid hinge piece during the second step.
This way I have constrained all my parts in the first step so that the contact is established between a pin and the hinge. And in the second step I have applied a pressure load and allowed the hinge to translate in a particular direction. Now my analysis model is almost ready. All that is left to be done is to mesh my parts. I will now switch over to the mesh module. When I enter the mesh module, Abacus CA color codes regions of the model according to the method it will use to generate the mesh. Green indicates structured mesh, yellow indicates sweet mesh and orange indicates free mesh using tet elements or suggests the need to be partitioned more to do a sweep or hex mesh. Since I would like to have sweep mesh on all the regions of my model, I will partition the cells color coded in orange to enforce constraints to make the cell sweep meshable. I will assign mesh controls on the whole part and set hex as a default element shape. I will do the same for the other parts too. I will assign element types to my parts. I can assign any of the various elements available in, in the Abacus element library, but I will choose to accept the defaults for this case. I will do the same for the other parts too. Once I have defined the mesh controls and element assignment, I can now define the global element size for my mesh and then go ahead and mesh my parts. Since the analytical rigid part, which is my print, is not meshable, I do not have to worry about meshing it. I have completed defining my analysis model and I am ready to submit the job for simulation. I can do this by switching over to the job module where I can create a job that is associated with my model and submit the job for analysis. While the job is running, I can use the job monitor to monitor the progress of my job and I have access to various results files in real time from the job monitor, from where I can look through the warning or error messages if there are any. Abacus CA provides a suite of post-processing tools to visualize the results from the analysis, like contour plots for field output variables, XY plots for history output variables, animations, overlay plots, etc. I will first plot the contour plots of one Macy's stress. I can remove portion of my model and only display the parts that I am interested in. I can control my deformation scale factor if necessary. I can also run the animation of my analysis with a particular contour plot over time. I can also quickly change the contour plot variable from the large list of output variables I have requested. Using the display group, I can remove all the parts except the hinge part and plot the contact pressure and see the contact pressure distribution on my part where the pin was in contact with the hinge. As you saw, Abacus CA provides a whole range of functionalities for setting up your model for a wide range of analysis using Abacus technology in a systematic and modularized fashion and provides various tools to post-process your analysis. I hope this demo was helpful in giving you a glimpse of what Abacus CA can do. Thank you.